Okay, here we've got two older figures from the modern era. We've got episode one, Adi Gallia with lightsaber and the red clone commander from Return of the Sith. Or Revenge of the Sith, sorry. So, let's look at this one first. This is the red variant, there's a green variant as well, so this one's got the red highlights on its armour. Excellent figure, comes with lots of accessories, a, a rifle, a pistol and some grappling hooks and equip various other equipment. Figure looks really good, has lots of highlights and looks amazing. Comes with a visor that can move up and down. So this is from Revenge of the Sith, Clone Commander, red, red variant, there's a green variant as well. Okay, here we've got Felt Tipern Trevag on an OTC car, 2005 Hasbro Star Wars. Uh, it's a graded by AFA, it's a U90, meaning U encirculated. It's card 90, bubble 90, figure 90, AFA graded. Uh, it's from the Cantina Encounter. He's a character from A New Hope. I think he's a Goto or stuff like that. He comes holding a red cup and a pistol, it looks like. Um, it's quite a good figure. And it looks, there you go, he's got a double horned head and a background picture. So this, these OTC cards are really nice, I don't have many of them at all. Uh, the double stripe looks kind of retro and has a photograph there in the front, Cantina and so these are called post OTC characters and if I turn it around we can see Felty Pan Trivag, it says Felty Pan Trivag is a bounty hunter who tracks Obi-Wan Kenobi to Tatooine after the Clone Wars, but loses him. Trevek stays on the planet and becomes a corrupt tax collector in Mossa Isley. His species is called the Gotal, who can make can sense emotions and energy rays that many species can't. The trait that comes in handy for ta tracking and collecting tax, obviously. Uh, everyone's favourite figure, uh, one of the most important characters, Prune Face or Orimarco as he's known on Power of the Force 2 cards and we've, I've got two examples here both AFA graded so I'll start with the better of the two well for me anyhow it's the Trilogo Vintage 1983 Prune Face and it's graded AFA 80 card gets 80 bubble 75 figure 85 and I've already got one of these graded on a US card, that's an 80 as well, but the Trilogo version is a lot rarer. So here you are, Prune Face. Okay, next thing is uh, Han Solo, Power of the Force, 95 on Italian GG, GG card. So, I love these Italian cards. Gear Stelliari, Star Wars, Han Solo looking like he's been on massive amount of steroids uh, still I've got it for the card not the figure uh, I like Han Solo anyhow so and it says Han Solo uh, who can speak Italian Confusal di Assolto e Pistola Sperante so I wonder what that means it probably means come with two weapons he's got, he's got his uh, classic blaster pistol there which you can see is a bit large and then he's got this assault rifle as well which is wearing around his arm there bulging biceps head sculpt's not brilliant but it's not bad uh, limited articulation for a figure that's about how many years old now? 95 and then you know back of the car 16 years now Gare Stelliari Han Solo Ubano uh, Okay, here we've got a Gamorrean guard from the vintage 1983 Return of the Jedi. Uh, it's a AFA grade 80U and it's the dark armor version. Sorry about the light, but it's gotten really dark. So 
This is a uh, quite a good figure for its time. It's quite probably the largest figure when it was made uh, out of the Star Wars line. Well, it's certainly the fattest, and it's a really good figure. I mean, nice paint job. This is the um, dark armored version. So you can get this with an armor that's more silver, or this with a sort of more slightly darker, darker tone to it. Comes with an axe, and is a really classic. Okay, here we got Hondo Anaka, and he's on his the first release card. He's a the leader of a gang of pirates, and is a Clone Wars figure and he comes with this sort of little uh, salacious crumb but a red version monkey thing uh, I think it's called a Kaiwakian mon monkey or something like that and the figure itself visually looks amazing the detailing in the face is top notch the sword is excellent the cutlass I mean and the musket type pistol everything about making him look like a par uh, pirate and I guess this character here is meant to be the pa parrot so excellent fi Okay, here we've got King Gornish of the Ewok series. This is on a Canadian card, so it's about 1985. Comes with a coin. As you can see, the bubble is really yellowed, which is common amongst these cards. Unfortunately, the bubble's got a slight crack here at the top, with a little hole there. Nothing too big, but still. Go on, as far as you can. <laughs> okay, hi, we've got here, for this review, we've got a couple of Power of the Force 1995-96 Luke X-Wings, all Snow Speeder costume actually. Uh, they're both powder force, one's the orange card, you, but both are US. Um, they're actually the snow speeder costume, even though the photograph shows him in his X-Wing outfit. And I've done a couple of reviews, I've shown a Luke on a THX card with the, that the European... Okay, here's the Jawa with its cloth cape on. So you can see that cloth cape's pretty much makes it look pretty different. You can just make out the glowing eyes or painted eyes and you can see that there's a bit of colour change to the plastic. So there you are, the Jara cloth cape, put it next to the big uh, carded version, the Empire Strikes Back version there. Okay, so Okay, so we looked at some 2010 figures and we've looked at some uh, a couple of vintage cards about the figures and now we're going to look at a couple of uh, a Saga Legends and the Clone Wars 2 pack. So the Saga Legends figure is the Space Trooper and this is a re-release. It's got a nice illustration there of the Space Trooper. This is the second version of the Space Trooper. There was one back in the Expanded Universe on Power of Force, which I still haven't got that one. Once I've got that one, I've got all the Expanded U Universe Power of Force figures. As you can see, it's a really good figure. It's really bulked up, muscular. Well, not muscular, but looks very kind of robotic, and it's got sort of flaps for flying with in space and a jet pack. And he comes with a kind of the pistol looks rather small in his hands. Okay, so here we've got a really excellent figure. This is from 2004. It's a C3PO. It's called Tatooine Ambush, and it comes with a removable arm, and it's on a Saga 
gold card. So it says a new hope on the side on the gold bar. You can just see it there. Um, sorry about the lighting. It's a bit dark. Well, it's autumn in England, so what to expect? Uh, though we've had quite mild weather, so. Okay, let's see if I can get a better image of Luke Bespin for you. There he is. Okay, so you can see it's quite a good out figure. Nicely detailed. Excellent. There you are, Luke Bespin. See if I can get the head without getting the... There you are. That's about the best I can do. There's the card. Classic card. Been used three times now back in 1980, 2007 and 2010. Still got to get that figure, the 2010 version. So, Luke Bespin's one of the really popular figures. Uh, so this is a Brazilian card, uh, the R2-D2 droids version. So it's just like the vintage, normal vintage figures, except it's been painted different. And this is the version with the lightsaber, pop-up lightsaber, and he's got a big red eye. And then you've got the quite a nice piece of artwork on the card. So this is a generic card. All Brazilian figure uh, droids figures that have come with the same card. The only difference is the sticker that they stick here, where it says R2-D2. Uh, you've got Vlix there. He's the most famous Brazilian figure. He's probably he's most likely the rarest Star Wars figure. So the guy behind C-3PO with the greenish face, that's Vlix. Uh, you've got Boba Fett in the background as well got C3PO and R2D2 and you've got uh, some added scenes here at the top you've got Vlix again and Tig from I guess and then you've got uh, Jord Dusat or whatever his name is and then you've got the droids lo logo at the top and there you go I've just been watching a few of the droid episodes on YouTube so they're pretty definitely aimed at kids Okay, so here you've got the back of the card, you've got the same image in the top corner, plus uh, the logo again, then some Brazilian Portuguese, I guess, uh, the figures that were available, you've got C3PO R2-D2, Dal Jobin, uh, Kia Mole, Keziban, uh, Jul Dusat, and of course the most famous is Vlix there. He is virtually impossible to get, and he'll cost a huge, huge amount of money. And you've got two of the vehicles that are available. You've got the ATL and the thing there, side gunner, I think that's what. Okay, this is the biker scout on the Power of the Jedi, and I've already done a review of this figure. This is the dirty version, and the only reason I've got this one is that it's got the white. One of its boots is unpainted. It's white still, so this boot should be have a brown stain on it. <laughs> yes. Okay, here we've got the 2008 battle pack, it's called Shield Generator Assault, and let's see if I can get better, it comes with an R2-D2 with sort of an exploding effect, like when he gets hit when trying to open the shield generator door. Then you've got the, this is probably the best figure out of the bunch, is um, the biker scout with the rebel soldier inside it, and so that's a pretty cool figure. Then you've got Han Solo, which is the, the same body as the Saga collection vintage from 2006 with a new head let's see if I can pick up the head I'm not sure of my light picking it up but that's Han Solo's got a new head I've taken photographs so you'll be able to see the photographs as well and then you've got Lieutenant Renz, the Imperial officer who says uh, something like freeze it rebel scum or something like on those okay this prototype figure can't really hold the lightsaber with both hands 
so it can hold it with one hand but it can't hold it with both like the actual production figure so there you are Luke Jedi Okay, here we've got a figure, it's not Star Wars, it's Battlestar Galactica. So this is from 1978-79. There weren't many figures released, but the TV show was quite popular at the time. So, uh, so this is the original Battlestar Galactica, not the new series. And this is the Imperious Leader. So it's more or less in the same sort of size as a Star Wars figure. Uh, the card has the picture of the Imperious Leader here and then you've got the figure here he's got quite a pink face with a sort of purplish OK here we've got uh, two vintage card backs they're from the 70s and 80s you've got a Canadian Sam Person uh, 12 back card back and a German Fight Fighter card back from about 1982 so it was a 2004 Hasbro Star Wars Hall of Fame Princess Leia Organa a graded 85 uh, it's from A New Hope this figure's a re-release it's a um, either Power of the Jedi or even earlier figure maybe the Comtech Princess Leia I'm not too sure about this but you can see that it's got limited ar articulation it's got civil head Swivel shoulders, swivel waist, and le legs, but the legs will be limited because of the plastic skirt she's wearing. Comes with a long pistol there, a bit too big, and a massive block. I mean, look how tiny that figure is. It's a uh, wicket. So, this figure's just been re released as well, and a vintage 2010 uh, figure. So, they are wicket, Warwick, Warwick, Warwick wicket. Wicket W Warwick. Shame this card's been mashed up. So, I mean, the only way you can make money on this now is to send it to AFA and get it U graded. But then that's more more money to spend, and you're losing the card, the Canadian card. Anyway, there's my rant for the day. Just be when you if you're posting stuff, send it in a box. Not, not in a Revenge of the Jedi um, proof card. So this is from 1983, it's, and so it mirrors what's happening now with the Revenge of the Jedi vintage collection cards with the actual carded action figures. So this is what it all goes back to. So back in 1980, early 1983, George Lucas was going to call the film Revenge of the Jedi, and then he changed his name. To, um, Return of the Jedi <laughs> a bit slow today and um, so this is the Bosk backer card proof card for Revenge of the Jedi and it's the same image that was used on the Empire Strikes Back cards and it has at the top there Revenge of the Jedi it's a 48 back card it says Bosk Bounty Hunter and you've got a nice image of Bosk there, a transition bounty hunter. And you've got the free knee and numb offer there from Revenge of the Jedi. And you've got the AFA grade there. Revenge of the Jedi Bosk proof card, AFA 85. And if I turn it around, you can see the 48 back. So it's a Star Wars action figures collector 48. So these are all Star Wars or Empire Strikes Back figures and it says special offer free near numb figure from Star Wars Revenge of the Jedi with five proofs of purchases so even now you have to send in your uh, seals or proofs of purchase to get the free uh, new Boba Fett, the work concept Boba Fett, the white one and so this is it, a Revenge of the Jedi um, proof card. Okay, next thing is a Rebel Hoth Rebel Soldier Power of the Force, about 96 on a European card. Uh, I only picked this up because it was £1.50, so you can't go wrong with that. 
uh, it's not too bad of a figure, a bit mus muscly, like, you know, and the legs are in a bit of a funny stance, um, so you know, in terms of posing, you, you're limited to the way it's already posed, and then, what I like about this is all the different languages there, you can see it says, um, Hoff Rebel Soldier, Soldier Rebel, blah blah blah, look at all of that, it looks really cool, and, um, you know, nice group. <laughs> Okay, here we've got a Luke Skywalker Bespin outfit from the original trilogy collection from 2004, and it's graded by AFA, and it's quite a decent figure. It's got uh, bendable knees, swivel waist, uh, hips, uh, slit cut elbows, swivel wrists and a twistable head so it's, for its time it's standard articulation of uh, your typical OTC figure so these are known as OTC collection 2004 and they've got quite a retro looking card a really nice card actually so it's got the double lines just like in the vintage cards from uh, back in the day the 70s and it has a uh, the way the name is done at the top is very similar to the um, vintage figures as well. It has a little picture there of Luke Skywalker in his best bin outfit from Empire Strikes Back. And then here it has the original trilogy logo. And then it doesn't have a picture on the back of the card. It has an actual scene from the film, The Empire Strikes Back, which is generally considered the most the best of the lot. Though I say episode 4 is my favourite. Okay, another look at the Princess Leia Organa in best bin gown. So you can see. So I've got this on. I've got two of these on Return of the Jedi Kenner cards. And I'll see if I can dig that footage up and mix it with this. Okay, so you've got this is a um, nice Empire Strikes Back logo. Then you've got best bin gown. And then you've got the actual figure, let's see if I can get a close up of the figure. Other variations are the colour of her hair, some some are dark, some are light brown, then the neck, that's the most famous variation there, whether it's painted or not, and the, the vinyl cape. So these probably were the last figures to come with vinyl capes, this, the, the early 80s um, Empire Strikes Back figures. And then you've got the UK grade, rarity is 3, so it's just slightly rare because it's on a German card, but this is quite an easy figure to find, nothing too hard to find really. Uh, it's quite a popular figure, so uh, they're not Princess Lee and Bespin gown, it's quite expensive. And then if you want to try and get the cr crew neck, then that's quite hard to get in the UK. Okay, Revenge of the Sith cards aren't my favourite. I don't really like them that much. I don't like the backing cards. I prefer other... I think these are my least favourite cards, really. Backing cards out of all the Star Wars ones so far. I mean, it looks okay, but I just think they could have done a better job with that. I prefer the Saga Blue Episode 1 cards, Power of the Force 2. So, out of all the modern cards, these cards are probably the ones that are my least favourite. Uh, what would I guess obviously the, the new 2010-11 uh, vintage, vintage retro cards, the OTC cards, they're the best ever, apart, apart from the original vintage cards, but they cost an arm and a leg, so I mean you can get modern cards pretty cheap on eBay now, so this one might be worth tracking down because it's just the m harder to find than the blue guard. Uh, average price in the UK for this figure, carded, will be about £7. And then probably cheaper in the USA. 
So there you are, the red guard. Got an 80 because if you look at the, just there there's a little crease just around the sort of hang, hanger thing. Uh, cool figure though. Okay, here we've got two of the 2010 Vintage Collection Wave 1 figures and I've been really bad at collecting these, I've only just got these now so we've got the Cloud Car Pilot on the Empire Strikes Back card and Forlorn on also on the Empire Strikes Back card these both have the classic image from the uh, 1980s so the same picture as what they had back in the day and you can see that the Cloud Car Pilot's been totally revamped and modernised as a Zuckus, I mean Forlorn Obviously, <laughs> I'm a vintage collector, so I, I, I remember them in that old... Okay, here we've got a couple of those proof cards or sample cards from the SDCC, San Diego Comic Convention. So this is Darth Vader from the 2010 collection. And it's a nice card. It's on the Empire Strikes Back logo with the original Darth Vader picture with the Kenner logo there. And it has a picture of the original figure there from 1980. And then the other figures on the range. And this is just a proof card, super sample card. So the only difference I've, I've been told is that this is blacked out. So there you are, and then that's the Darth Vader sample card. And you can pick these up quite cheap on eBay. So that's your Darth Vader sample card. Okay, this is our Han Solo from 19. 78. It's a big head Han Solo and it's on a 20 back H card. I only know that because it says at the bottom because uh, of the AFA label. So this has got the free Boba Fett offer so just like the new vintage figures. Okay so the reason why uh my channel is called MKM Films. Is that I, me and my friends, we sort of used to make videos together, and that's what we used to call ourselves MKM. So the K is my name, and then the M and the M, the other M's are two other characters. But I've sort of, so I've used that chat name on YouTube, and I can't change it. So, but I mean, it's quite an okay, it's an okay name. Uh, and you know. I tend to do a lot of Star Wars stuff, I do modern stuff, plus there's a lot of stuff from the 80s, which is my favourite stuff, so, you know, hopefully there's something on my channel that will, um, you know, interest you. Uh, I've probably got some of the longest videos there, I tend to edit on YouTube as well, so I just put loads of videos together that I've already made, and just stick them, stack them all together, so... I've got some really long videos on YouTube. Uh, also, I reckon maybe perhaps one of the weirdest places to do a Star Wars review from would be in a graveyard, which I've, I've done that twice. The first time in 2010 and then uh, earlier this summer. And then other things I do, I make other proper short films as well. So, and it's not just Star Wars. I, I mean, that's more my hobby. And then you know, I mean when I get time and I can find someone to act in my <laughs> terrible film, like, like Stalin and Ho, Ho and all that sort of stuff, so, you know, anyway, cheers.
Okay, here we've got a Jawa on an Empire Strikes Back card. It's a US release, Kenner, and it has the Star Wars Display Arena offer. And you've got the little Jawa in the cloth cape. Obviously, everyone knows about the vinyl cape Jawa, which is like a holy grail of. Okay, this is Sora Bulk, and he's on a Saga collection card from about 2006. And I'm sorry about the light, but it's getting really dark now. And he's a Jedi from Attack of the Clones. I've taken photographs, so you'll be able to see the photographs much better, but because the light's just getting really bad at the moment. And I've got like two or three lights on already, and it's still not really... Thing, picking it up. So you've got the jet, he's a weak Jedi here, and he comes with a blue lightsaber, and it's a quite a good figure. The only reason I got it is because it was so cheap, it was five pounds, the winning bid was on eBay, and then the post of the packaging was about three or four pounds. I was trying to win on the stuff else as well, I got outbid because that was a cheap. So you're talking about, I mean, to get this, to get pay for AFA is about 20 quid, so you know. It's not a high grade, but it's still not bad. It uh, tells you there. Fighting the has erupted in Genosis Execution Arena. Sora Bulk is one of the task force of 200 sent to save Obi-Wan Kenobi, Anakin Skywalker, and Padme Adama from the execution. Sora uses his Jedi skills to destroy attacking battle droids and to protect his friends. In the end, he is one of the few survivors of this fierce conflict. Okay, this is Admiral Akbar on the Return of the Jedi 65 bat, made in Taiwan, 1983. Uh, he was offered as a free figure back in those days, a mail-in, and lots of cards have that information on the back. Uh, two variations of the figure, just to do with the colour of the vest, either it's that sort of greyish colour or a beige colour. Uh, otherwise, there's no variations really. Uh, Comes with this sort of command stick. Just been re-released in the BOT, Vin well the Vintage Collection, the 2010-2011 version, which is a much better figure with the same sort of style card. Uh, this was sold in England because it's got its price sticker still on it, one pound seventy-five. So lots of American cards have sold over here. Uh, that's your Admiral Akbar. I got mine as a mail ray back in the 1982-83 and he says famous line of Admiral Akbar is it, it Okay here we've got I already showed this one this is a 1980 Kenner sort of battery operated uh, two lightsaber toothbrush and you can see that I just got this one which is uh, that one was mine from childhood this one so that I've always had this one so my uncle sent me that from Australia and then this one is the first version of the toothbrush so this is came out would have come out a couple of years earlier and this is the Star Wars um, logo version so you can see the slight differences like the back this is a brighter blue the uh, lightsaber switch and the uh, Internal me mechanics are a different colour, and on that one it's red, here it's yellow, and the sort of internal stickers are different. So here they, you can see, whereas here they're a bit more futuristic. Okay, so this is the Star Wars one. Uh, it's not as good as the Empire Strikes Back one, because you've just got this massive logo there, and then just a few pictures at the bottom. So they're quite interesting pictures, you've got Han Solo there. The <laughs> still works, it's still in good nick, and I played with it a lot back in the, when I was a kid, so it's done really well, this little droid. So that's the loose power droid, and behind it is the carded um, 77 back US Kenner card, easy find.
If you want to get this on a 21 back or 20 back, you're going to pay quite about four times as much, five times maybe. So it's up to you whether you're going to get that. So that's the Power Droid. Cheers. He looks like a solid character, like a solid. Because he was always portrayed as being a bit drunk in the. <laughs> Not that I can say anything, because uh, I had a bit of a hangover this morning myself, so you know. Um, not sure how I got home or anything like that. <laughs> oh dear. So, you know. And so he was a bit, there he is having a nice drink. That was, well, you know, free, there's free drinks at work last night. That was a big mistake for me because, uh, you know, I felt pretty sick this morning. But that's my own stupidness. So here you got Yak Face. I wasn't sick though, but, you know. Oh, uh, there's Yak Face. Uh, C3PO and the drunk Reese. And it says here, even with a court full of conspirators, Jabba the Hutt never suspected Reese as a potential assassin. Reese cut a deal with the Empire to destroy Jabba, but fate would save that role for Princess Leia. It's got other figures there, Gamorrean Guard, the Tarkin, Luke and Ceremonial, two creature sets, and other stuff like that. And how to get the actual free freeze frame uh, binocular thing. And then you've got the figure again. There he is, Riyi's excellent figure. <laughs> okay, here we've got the 2005 post OTC um, Sand Trooper Tatooine Search. Uh, out of all the these this range of figures, this is one of the hardest to find, if not the hardest to find. So this one is tricky to find. Um, it says Sand Trooper there, in a sort of retro style, stuck on the bubble. And then you've got the figure here, which I believe is a repaint of the 2001 uh, Power of the Jedi Sand Trooper. Okay, so that's the black hole figure. 1979-80, Disney, Mego, and there's the Sentry. Looks pretty cool. So, there you are. Not Star Wars, Black Hole. Okay, if you like this, rate and subscribe. Cheers, thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>
had more space than Carol would have worn. Okay, here we've got. We looked at a Revenge of the of the Jedi card from 2011. This is the real thing. This is from 1983. This is a Luke Hoff card, Luke Skywalker, and it's a Revenge of the Jedi card. It's AFA gra graded. So these are. This stems from originally Lu George Lucas. Everyone knows this anyhow. But George Lucas was going to call, call Return of the Jedi Revenge of the Jedi, but then he had second thought. But by then, Ken Kenner had already developed the Revenge of the Jedi logo for these cards. And so now these are highly prized by... Okay, here we've got um, Salacious Crumb from the Jabba the Hutt playset from 1983. So here it is, made in Hong Kong. 1983. So there you are, Salacious Crumb. Comes with a little tail. I'm sure this is pretty similar to the new um, Salacious Crumb that's been released. So there you are, Salacious Crumb. Okay, one more look at the Canadian droids and Ewok figure, Kia Mole and the Duloc Scout. Uh, these figures didn't really sell very well, so after the Return of the Jedi line and the Power of the Force line, uh, Kenner tried to keep Star Wars going, but by 1985 every everyone was getting into computer games, and well, I certainly did, and so I lost interest. So these are the sort of the dying embers of the sort of vintage Star Wars line. Not everyone collects these, some people don't consider these worth collecting. I, I, I've only recently started collecting these ones, so, you know, and they're still not too expensive. Some are, I mean, like Vlix is a cost of fortune, but some of these these ones aren't too, too they're not going to break the bank, as they say. So that's, And they're both Canadian, so these are both my first Canadian droids and my first Canadian Ewok. So there you are. Time to say... Martin Lim, you are now a Jedi Knight. Take the helmet of training off. Remove your helmet. Put it on the ground. Take the lightsaber into your hand. You are now a Jedi now. You must fight the evil Darth Vader. You are now a Jedi. Stand! Rise up. Are you ready to follow the Jedi way? Yeah. Well, say something, then. Eh? Hot. Oh. Oh. I'm very hot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're very hot. <honest. laughs>